Good afternoon everyone. Today we are going to see about the scale up of mixing using power per unit volume. Whenever we are going to scale up a particular process, so we will be having different or multiple scale up factors and out of which we will be using power per unit volume most commonly. So today we are going to see how to use this power per unit volume and what are the cases and how to calculate the speed of an agitator using this power per unit volume. And before going into the topic, so first of all, we should understand what is exactly power per unit volume means. So here we got a symbol of reactor. And this is a motor, this is an agitator, so this is the shaft. So whenever you are going to provide certain energy to this particular motor in form of electrical energy, the motor will try to convert it into mechanical energy and it will transfer this energy through the shaft to the agitator. And the agitator will transfer this mechanical energy to the reaction mass so that what will happen is the reaction mass will get some momentum and it will start rotating along with the vessel surface whenever you got some low sweep agitators so the uniformity of mixing is going to be less in this low sweep, low sweep agitators when compared to the, the high sweep agitators why because as you are going to transfer the energy and if your agitator is going to have some less sweep so let's say your reaction mass is having this this as an agitator in such a case what will happen is since the blaze diameter as well as the surface area is less so automatically the energy transferring is going to be less that means it will be able to transfer to only a little amount of reaction mass but as you are going to stir it what will happen is the energy will get transferred to other reaction mass but it might take some time and if your reaction mass blade diameter is high automatically what will happen is the energy transfer can be more and it is also going to be more uniform when compared to the low sweep or the agitator with less surface area so let's take an example to understand this better so you got an agitator where the surface area is only 0.1 meter square so for an example just consider this this particular agitator is only is able to transfer one joule of energy and if you got an agitator with a surface area of 0.5 meters square so maybe in this case it can transfer up to 10 joules as the surface area is going to increase so automatically the energy transfer can be increased and also if you want to match the same energy like for this particular 0.1 meter square of agitator if you want to provide 10 joules of energy then you can increase the rpm that means we have to play with the speed of an agitator to make it uniform okay and we should understand what are the cases we can use for scale up using this power per unit volume so whenever you try to perform scale up using power per unit volume so there will be two general cases the case one is where the reaction mass is homogeneous in nature so in such case most of the times what will happen is there is no or there might be no impact of mixing pattern and the case 2 here it is going to be like the reaction mass is heterogeneous in nature so in such a case most of the times we need similar mixing pattern okay similar mixing pattern in the sense so we have to deploy same type of agitator and the basic formula that you will be using to calculate this power per unit volume is so power per unit volume is equals to np that is the power number and rho multiplied with n cube and d power 5 divided by the volume so here np refers to the power number rho refers to the density of reaction mass and n cube refers to the cube of like a uh, agitator speed to the power 3 and convert to the small d this refers to the agitator diameter so coming to case form so if you ever want to scale up so we can write the equation as like uh, as we are going to maintain constant power per unit volume so let's make two cases where the first one is going to be p1 
by v1 equals to np1 multiplied by rho multiplied by n1 q multiplied by d1 to the power 5 divided by the volume and let's take the case 2 that is where you want to scale up so this is going to be p2 by v2 so this is going to be np2 multiplied by rho multiplied by n2 to the power 3 multiplied by d2 to the power 5 divided by volume that is v2 since the case that we want to perform is power for unit volume so p1 v1 p1 by v1 equals to p2 by v2 so we need to estimate the unknown parameter by equating these two equations and for an example let's take the unknown parameter is the speed of agitator in the second case where we want to perform the scalar so in such a case what we need to do is so this is going to be np1 n1 to the power 3 so here we are going to neglect the density of reaction mass why because since you are going to equate and in the both cases the, uh, the density is going to be same so we are not going to neglect it v2 divided by np2 v1 d2 to the power 5 Whole to the power 0.33 so this is the equation that we will be using now and let's take an example where I want to perform the scale up between anchor and PVT why because in case one there is no impact of mixing pattern so here I want to take anchor as an agitator and in the second case I will be taking the PBT as agitator. Let's say the reactor capacity is here it's a 2 kL for anchor and 3 kL for PBT and the volume let's say it's 1 kL and it's 1.5 kL and the diameter of agitator there is nothing but small d so since anchor is going to have more sweep I will take it as 0.97 meter and let's say this is a box 0.64 meter and coming to the power number since anchor is going to have low power number so it is going to be a box 0.6 and coming to PVT I will take it as 1.3 so if you want to gain more knowledge about this power number and how to identify the power number we have made a video previously and i'll be providing you with a download of a, a youtube video link in the description please check it there and the final one is the speed of agitator so let's say this is rpm and it is rps the speed of anchor is found to be 48 and now i want to Calculate the RPM of PVT. In RPS, it is going to be divided by 60. And first of all, I'll try to estimate the speed in RPS for PVT. So this is going to be, I'll be using the same formula. And this is case 1 and this is, let's say, case 2. So NP1, that is 0.6 multiplied by n1 cube that is speed to the power 3 multiplied with diameter to the power 5 multiplied by v2 that is the volume of the second reactor divided with np2 that is the power number of the second case that is pvt multiplied with the volume of first case multiplied with the diameter of pvt that is 0.64 to the power 5 to the power 0.33 so you got almost 1.41 times and in terms of 
rpm this is going to be multiplied with 60 so we need to maintain a coax 85 rpm to match the same power per unit volume okay and this is case one and now let's consider the case two where the reaction mass is heterogeneous in nature and we need to maintain similar mixing pattern so in such a case i want to consider both as pbt's so first of all let's try to derive the equation so here we need to neglect the power per i mean the power number why because we are going to use the same agitator in such a case so better to neglect the power number so here n2 it's directly equals to n1 cube d1 power 5 multiplied by the volume of second case and then divide by the volume of first case multiplied by d2 to the power 5 to the power 0.33 and here I will be using the same case but I will be taking both as PPTs. So let's say this is PPT. So the capacity is 2KL and 3KL. Here I'll reduce the sweep. So I'll be dividing it with point, I mean divide with 2. So I'll be removing this power numbers again. Why? Because the power numbers are going to be same for the agitator and agitator in the case where I am operating in turbulent zone. Why? Because the power number is going to be constant in turbulent zone for same set of agitators. So the diameter is going to be less. So here simply what I will be doing is I will remove these power numbers. Why? Because the formula remains same. So, if the speed increases, automatically what I have to do is, I have to reduce the RPM. So, let's say initially it is going to rotate at 48. So, I have to maintain 35 RPM. Or, let's change it to 110. So, if in this case, the 2KL reactor, if I am going to operate at 110 RPM, so 3KL can be operated at 79 RPM. Okay. So, this is how we need to estimate the required speed of an agitator and this is how we are going to scale up a particular process using power per unit volume and if you have any questions in this particular video please write us at pharmacalci823 at the rate gmail.com and if you like our video please share the video with your dear ones and also please sub subscribe to our channel and for your convenience i'll be providing you with a download link for this particular excel sheet so you can check in the description of this particular video. Thanks for watching the video.